Hello and one and all and welcome back to yet another movie review and this time I shall be doing my spoiler review on Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, this film has been out for quite a while well now so hopefully you've all got a chance to see it. If for any reason you have not I am going to go into spoilers so that is your warning. Stay off uh, social media and from this video or if you don't care about spoilers that's perfectly okay with me and if, also if you have seen it welcome anyways so if you saw my original review for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness you know I really enjoy that film quite a bit I think that film uh, really did capture all the Sam Raimi vibes which I loved and overall as a film I think it <laughs> Is a fun, entertaining film. And re-watching Spider-Man No Way Home before seeing this film. Uh, I love that film even more. Uh, the more I think about No Way Home, the more I love it even more. And honestly, that might be my new favourite film for 2021. Along with No Time to Die and The Suicide Squad. And I kind of feel bad for not putting it number one. Because the more I think about it, the, it just gets better and better for me. With... With the Multiverse of Madness, it is a fun, entertaining film, and I really had a fun time with it. But anyways, um, we open up with Doctor Strange, uh, playing all types of characters. You know, you're playing uh, Sinister Strange, Defender Strange, you know, and we see one of them in the very uh, beginning of the film and all uh, with uh, America Chavez and then we also cut to a wedding scene and guys I'm not gonna go throughout into the whole movie I'm just gonna go into bits and pieces uh, what I think stood out to me but anyways um, I loved how um, you know the time travel was real, you know, it was going different dimensions, you know, it was an animated area, then there was a paint with colour paint and all that, it was really cool. But I think we'll go straight into the moment that everybody has been talking about for Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. As I, if you saw my original review, there's been stuff that we have been talking about for a while, according to this film coming out, that we're hoping to see, and including myself. And that being cameos. Now, as I said in my original review, this wasn't like cameo galore or anything. This isn't like the king of cameos. But for what the cameos we got were pretty good. Before we actually get into the Illuminati cameos, uh, we do see Bruce Campbell. Because Bruce Campbell is in every Sam Raimi movie, apparently. So, hey, it's good to see him. Anyways, let's get to Illuminati stuff. So, uh, the first one we're going to mention is kind of the obvious one. If you've seen the trailers, you hear the voice for Professor Charles Xavier, played by Patrick Stewart. We shall tell him the truth. Now, yes, it's Patrick Stewart. Yes, it's Charles Xavier. But it's not the one that you're thinking of. It's not the wheelie chair, um, blue suited um, Charles Xavier. It is, in fact, the one from the animated series. Da -da 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 Just hearing that music and him coming on with the yellow flying chair, wheelchair. It was just great wearing the green suit. You know, that's pretty much what he looks like in the um, animated series, anyway, of X Men. Now, would I have loved to see him from the the actual X-Men series of the films? Yeah, but for what we got for um, Charles Xavier, it was pretty dang good. And let's get into the other cameos. Um, so, we are then introduced uh, from uh, What If, the TV show, that being Captain Carter. Yes, Peggy Carter as Captain Carter. 
you know, seeing that shield was just great. I really liked her. She was one of the standouts of the cameos. Then we get to see more of the um, Liminatis. There's five of them uh, that have been considered spoilers. So a third one, we have Black Bolt. And I love what they do with Black Bolt, which we'll get into in a minute. And then we are also introduced to um, uh, Lechena Lynch, if I've pronounced the name correctly, as Captain Marvel. And of course, the moment we've all been waiting for. Hallelujah. We finally got something good, fantastic for John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic. Hell yeah. Like, I've not seen the 90s Fantastic Four, but the two from the 2000s and Fantastic, we know the story to those movies. We know the story to them. Anyway, um, but it was so great uh, that we're actually getting a good uh, Fantastic Four uh, thing or Mr. Fantastic, something Fantastic Four that is actually really good. And John Krasinski owned it as Mr. Fantastic, a.k.a. Reed Richards. I loved seeing him. And honestly, I'd pay to see him again as uh, Mr. Fantastic, despite what they do with the Illuminatis in this film. So, and as I said, regarding to characters in my original spoiler-free review... Elizabeth Olsen as Sc Scarlet Witch, also as Wanda, is actually the villain in this movie. That's a big spoiler right there. And she kills off the Illuminatis. My favourite death scene of the Illuminatis was by far when um, you see Black Bolt's mouth disappearing and pfft, there he goes, he's dead. Then, then you see uh, Mr. Fantastic stretching, and there he goes, he's dead. And then goes uh, Captain Carter, you know, throwing the shield, and, and her death was pretty brutal. Now, a lot of people have mixed feelings on uh, these deaths. I mean, the one that I'm mixed about is the Captain Marvel one. You know, it's just a statue falling on top of her and was just like yeah that was a bit of a lame death but the other deaths I didn't mind and also uh, Charles Xavier you're coming in uh, going through his mind and turns his neck and he's dead they're all dead the Illuminatis are dead and so we then go straight into the third act which really goes Sam Rainey style of filming in, which I really do admire Sam Rainey for anyway. It was really, really awesome. And seeing a uh, zombie uh, Doctor Strange. And I don't know what to say, honestly, guys. And I also like the ending where um, Doctor Strange gets another eye on his forehead. Which could lead into a Doctor Strange 3, possibly. Um, then we do get uh, two credit scenes. Uh, we have one uh, with um, uh, Charlie's Theron, if I've pronounced the name right, who looks like an Eternal. Who could be a next Eternal for an Eternal sequel. But, yeah, anyway. Um, and also the other credit scene was with uh, Bruce Campbell. It's over. <laughs> Which, yeah, kind of copying off uh, Deadpool's post-credit scene. And in regards to cons, I wish there were more cameos, honestly. I mean, some predictable ones were there, like Charles Xavier and Mr. Fantastic and uh, Captain Carter. Those were, like, my top three uh, favourite cameo, uh, anyway, um, and I also did, like, Black Bolt as well, uh, the Shana Lynch, I thought, was pretty good, despite what they do with her death, 
But overall, guys, um, I really wish they brought in more characters. Uh, you know, they could could have been, you know, Hugh Jackman, uh, Deadpool, uh, you know, Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield as Spider-Man. Um, or anybody else from older Marvel stuff, you know, Daredevil as uh, Ben Affleck and all that. Maybe they just wanted to focus that with Doctor Strange 3, depending how well this goes. Because I think all the Marvel characters have always had their third installments as their biggest in their trilogy or series. Because Civil War was Captain America's biggest one, Thor Ragnarok, and then now we're getting Thor the Love, Love and Thunder. Then of course there was Infinity War, Endgame, Iron Man 3 because it had all the suits. Then uh, it's Spider-Man No Way Home because of the other Spider-Men. So maybe they're probably just going to stick with the third installment as the biggest uh, installment for the Marvel character series, standalone series in the MCU. But I am curious to see where they go with Doctor Strange's character whether Scott Derrickson or Sam Rainey is going to direct it. Hey, maybe they could uh, collaborate together. That would be interesting if they would collaborate together. But overall, guys, I don't want to get into too negative. Um, I do enjoy this film. I, I like the first Doctor Strange film directed by uh, Scott Derrickson uh, better than uh, Multiverse of Manus. It's still a fun time anyway. And there you go, guys. That was my spoiler thoughts on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Comment down below, let you know below what uh, was your favourite scene in this. And also, who was your favourite Liminati or cameo in this movie? Let me know below in the comments and let's have a great discussion down there. And if you're new, I'm a movie reviewer from the UK who likes to do movie reviews, classics, on special occasions and when something new comes out and as always please feel free to leave a comment like subscribe share this video and notify that bell before you leave all of my social media links can be found in the description below and as always until my next video i shall see you then and peace